you think about wind, the first thing that comes to mind is probably a hurricane or a tornado, extreme winds that exert dramatic forces. But the wind is always blowing at least a little bit, moving moisture and heat from one place to another. In this episode of Everyday Science, we'll look at the forces that make the wind blow, from the early morning breezes that come off the mountains to the winds up high that we see push the clouds. And, yes, we'll look at how certain weather conditions can lead to the dramatic high winds of a hurricane or a tornado. We'll start in the Channel 10 studio, exploring the most basic question, what makes the wind blow? Welcome to another episode of Everyday Science. We've just seen a bit about our topic for today, wind, and I have a couple of young scientists in the studio who are going to help me do some experiments to learn all about it. So Samantha, Sierra, thank you for joining me. And we've actually got the wind blowing right now. You folks have some anemometers that you built, which we can use to measure wind speed. <laughs> Excellent. And that's going to be useful. We're going to be measuring some wind later. We're going to start with something really simple, and that is, what makes the wind blow? That's the first question which we're going to answer. So I think we can probably turn off the wind for now. <laughs> That's probably enough wind. Go ahead and set the anemometers down. And then you folks can each come up to one of these. We have these exercise balls here, which are partially inflated. And right now, the pressure inside them is the same. And so there's pressure in here, and there's pressure in there. But the pressure is the same as the pressure in the atmosphere. Really? Yes, indeed. Wow. <laughs> but if you were to push down on this one, or you were to push down on this one, you'd make more pressure. Now, up in that tube here, we have a bunch of cut little thingies, which can be blown back and forth by wind. And you're going to make wind. So, Samantha, if you push down on your ball, push down on it. Oh, yeah. And there you can see all the little guys go over to the side. And then, Sierra, you push back. Oh, yes. And then you push. Make them go back and forth. There we go. And what you're doing is you're making pressure, and the air goes from the ball that has higher pressure to the ball that has the lower pressure. And that's ultimately what makes the wind blow, is wind goes from a place where there's high pressure to a place where there's low pressure. No really? way! Yes, I've never indeed. Known that. Let's go ahead and pull this out of the way. And we're going to have another way to make the wind blow, and we're going to use the high pressure and the low pressure for that. Ooh. Inside this container, there's a chunk of dry ice. Do you know what dry ice is? It's no, a, why don't you tell us, Brian? <laughs> It's frozen carbon dioxide, so it's a gas, but it's actually been frozen. Well, as it's been sitting here, it's been turning in back into a gas. So right now, this container is filled up with, filled up with carbon dioxide gas. You can't see it. If you look close at the container, you don't, it doesn't look like there's anything different than ordinary air in there, but there is. It's full of carbon dioxide. Now, it turns out carbon dioxide is more dense than air. So the pressure at the bottom of this container is bigger than the pressure at the top of the container. And it's bigger than the pressure in the room around here because that air is more dense, or the carbon dioxide is more dense than the air. So there's higher pressure inside the container than there is outside the container. And we ta just talked about pressure and how pressure makes the wind blow. And we said that air blows from high pressure to low pressure, right? So if I lift up this container, the air is going to go from where the pressure is high, which is inside the container, to where the pressure is low, which is the air in the room. Well, inside this container is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide won't let things burn. It's not oxygen. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to lift this up. High pressure inside, low pressure outside. When I lift it up, what's the gas going to do? Yeah. <laughs> That's the ticket. It's all going to kind of roll out. Okay, watch the candles. Here we go. One, and two, and three. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, Brian. That's amazing. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And what happened was all the air flowed out. And when it hits the candles, what's happened is they've been hit by carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it's pushing out. But the candles can't burn in it, and so whoosh, it extinguishes all the flames at one time.